Let's have a look at how this course is structured. And I've split the course up into two main sections. The first section is going to be quite a short section and we're going to review the ABAP language. We're not going to go in depth into detail, but we're just going to review some of the main components that make up ABAP itself so that we are all on the same level for when we move over to looking at ABAP objects. So the ABAP recap, we're going to cover data types, how we create data types ourselves, how we use the standard data types in the system, how we can create structures using data types, how we use internal tables based on structures. Then we'll look at some of the uh, subroutine functionality. How do we modularize code at the moment in standard procedural ABAP? So we'll go through those basic building blocks of ABAP. And then once we have got those covered, we will move on to ABAP objects itself. Now, ABAP objects can get quite technical. And when you go through this course, I want you to keep in mind it can get complicated because we're learning lots of new methodologies and techniques. It can seem a little bit overwhelming to begin with. But don't worry about that. Just work your way through the course. And if you can't remember things or it doesn't make sense, do not worry, because as we go on to the examples, you will see what I'm talking about. You will see some of the principles and methodologies put in place in code itself, and it should become a lot easier to understand. There's lots of new terms to get used to in ABAP objects, and some of the <laughs> descriptions, the way things work, can seem very complicated at times. So work your way through, and you need to practice yourself. So I will set some questions and answers and ask you to create some programs yourself. And once you've done that, you can then continue with more videos to show how I would have written code to produce the solution that I've asked you to create. So without further ado, we're going to cover attributes and methods. They're the basic building blocks of ABAP objects. We're going to look at local classes to begin with. And if you're familiar with ABAP, you will understand, you'll probably realize that we can have local classes and global classes. I'm going to focus on local classes to begin with because that will let us create objects ourselves, classes. And once we understand how to do it all manually, we can then create global classes using some of the built-in SAP tools that we have in our ABAP workbench. So we will go through creating classes, instantiating objects. We will call methods of objects. We will then move into inheritance, which is where we can share objects from one class to another. We'll then hit on something called polymorphism. Sounds a grand word, doesn't it? But that's a way of allowing us to create two objects from different classes that may be based on the same um, parent class, if you like. And depending on how we call the methods in those objects, they will carry out different activities, even though they're using the same code base. Don't worry, we'll explain it all as we get to it. We'll then move on to interfaces, which is another, I would say, a more advanced feature of ABAP objects. It's, um, it's a feature of object-oriented programming itself. You know, it's fundamental to nearly all other languages. But the way we use it in ABAP, we, we will touch on it. And if you try to jump into it right now, you probably wouldn't understand. You need to work your way through the course. So what I'm trying to say is that can get quite complicated with the interfaces side. But once we've gone through creating our classes, you'll be able to understand it. Then we'll touch on polymorphism with interfaces as well. Then we'll go on to events and event-driven programming. Then finally, once we've covered all that, once we've worked out how to create all this code using local classes, we will go on to using the class builder, which will allow us to create global classes that can be used by any program within our system. And the class builder will help us. It's a tool to help us get the syntax right with our ABAP objects. There's a nice interface where we can create methods and attributes and things like that. And you're saying, well, I wish we, we could have started with this earlier, but by creating local classes, first of all, you'll get the thorough understanding. 
which will then allow you to zip through the class builder really fast and see how beneficial it can be for you creating programs going forward. Let's get started.